I'd like to introduce you to your speaker for today, Elisa Johnson. She is the Collaborate 20 Agenda Chair, and she works for KESS. Take it away, Elisa. Thanks, Mike, and welcome to everyone that's joining the presentation today. Uh, we hope you, you'll uh, get some good tips and tricks on submitting pa papers for Collaborate. Uh, if you haven't uh, submitted before, we hope you will. We have, um, I know that all of you out there have a lot of great stories to tell and a great information to share with our attendees at Collaborate. First up, some dates, important dates. When is Collaborate? April 19th through 23rd, 2020. Uh, we're, this year we're hosting it at the Mandalay Bay Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. This has been a great venue for us throughout the years and uh, we're really looking forward to going back there again this year after our uh, 2019 in San Antonio. Uh, let's move forward and see what we're going to talk about today. First of all, we're going to talk about what is Collaborate, and then we're going to talk about what happens at Collaborate. If you haven't attended before, we want to kind of let you see what that experience is going to be like. I'll talk to you about how you apply to speak. I've um, been at collaborate and spoken for 10 years now and it's a great experience a great opportunity to um, meet with other oracle users and uh, share your experiences we'll go through the paper selection process and then we'll talk about some tips and tricks and how you can best get your paper selected finally we'll go through some dates and deadlines and then give you an opportunity to ask questions First of all, what is Collaborate? Well, Collaborate, the name is, comes from um, the cooperation of two different Oracle user groups, both OATUG and Quest. Uh, we both have really different focus areas for the on-premise applications, and so it, it gives an opportunity you know, for our attendees that use more, multiple Oracle products to get everything at one location. And also, you know, from our exhibitors, it gives them an opportunity to, to ex exhibit and show their um, offerings to uh, the attendees in one location. OATUG primarily handles um, Oracle eBusiness Suite, EPM, and Hyperion, and um, the cloud applications. We'll also, also talk about data scientists, analytics, and professional development. Quest primarily handles Oracle PeopleSoft and JD Edwards, and we really do share the cloud applications. So the cloud applications that you see above for OATUG, Quest will also have similar sessions um, as well for cloud applications. So what happens at Collaborate? Um, Collaborate is really the best of all Oracle worlds that you might see. Um, it's a place where users can share knowledge with Oracle users, other Oracle users. I really think that's the power that we bring to bear is that um, you can find somebody else at the conference that's been there and done that um, in, in an environment that you're or an application that you're trying to implement. Our speakers showcase innovative business solutions. So you may have a business challenge or problem that you're currently facing and you can find uh, other companies that have actually solved that um, challenge. Users can also highlight their application expertise. Um, if you're a first time user of Oracle, this is a great place for you to come and learn more about um, how to better use the applications. And then also we have um, some very specific industry um, sessions so that you can get perspectives, you know, for instance, um, public sector or government, um, things that are um, provide specific challenges to those sectors. Um, we discuss um, and have um, both user sessions and special interest groups around a lot of the industries. Um, Oracle is also there, which we're very excited about because, again, they're, they can share the latest and greatest about the product roadmap and the strategies that they're undertaking. I know the Executive Vice President of eBusiness Suite Development um, always gives a, a well-attended session. It's probably the highest attended session for OATUG, um, talking about the eBusiness Suite roadmap. We also have Oracle support sessions and are able to do certifications. Um, so that's a great opportunity for you. 
Uh, we, again, as I spoke before, we talk about on-premise and cloud, where, um, whereas other events you might go to would only be cloud focused, we realize and embrace um, customers that have decided to stay on premise as well. And we feel like it's really important to do knowledge sharing um, for about mo both on premise um, and cloud applications and what your roadmap would look like. We also um, talk about professional development. Um, where can you, uh, how can you improve just in your job in general? We have some great workshops and hands on labs. I know uh, last year we had an Oracle Cloud Infrastructure um, hands on lab. So EBS with the shift to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure that was, you know, um, a couple of sessions of that that was completely packed. Um, we're going to repeat that again this year. So um, really a great opportunity there. And then, of course, networking. It's the conversations before and after those sessions and at the different events that we have that are really um, valued. And then we have um, welcome reception, closing parties. So again, a chance to have fun as well. So how do you apply to speak? Simply go to the Collaborate 20 website and view the present tab and click, um, click on that and get to, and here's the link, the direct link, if you wanna just use that um, to get to that site. It's really important when you're submitting an application to speak um, that you have you know, some kind of catchy title um, that's not only for getting your paper selected, but also getting attendees to your session. I mean, they really want to understand what you're going to be talking about. Um, the clever title is kind of the hook, but then really the abstract is super important to tell them what are you going to be sharing with them. Um, and then you can put in between, well, there's opportunity between one and five learning objectives, but I can tell you as someone that votes on the presentations, um, if I see somebody with just one objective or two objectives, to me that reflects that they, they don't have, haven't put a lot of thought into what they're going to be sharing. So um, please um, put three to five objectives. So again, um, not only the people that are selecting the presentation, but the attendees can better know what they're going to be, um, what you're going to be talking about when they get to your uh, session. If you're accepted, a PowerPoint is due. Um, prior um, by February 28th, 2019. So you have plenty of time to get the PowerPoint together. Um, what you have to focus on now for the, pre the paper submission is the abstract and the objectives. Um, if you get accepted, users and those partners that are exhibiting at Collaborate receive a complimentary registration. So that's a great benefit because of course you're getting back to all the attendees at Collaborate. So it's a win-win for both. But um, you do receive that complimentary registration. If you are a partner, but you are not, um, you choose not to exhibit at Collaborate, you receive a discounted registration. So your registration will be um, $299.99. And I would say also just in terms of the registration cost, um, you do need to stay in one of the um, allocated hotels or the identified hotels. Um, if you choose to stay somewhere besides the designated hotels, and this is not just Mandalay Bay, there's other hotels in that block, um, then it's an additional $200, um, even if you receive complimentary registration. So just keep that in mind and get, you know, stay at one of the hotels that is nearby um, that's on in the block. Um, and, and, you know, again, that helps the conference experience too, because you're right there where all the action is. Okay, so let's talk about um, some tips and tricks for success. Start with a solid idea. Um, you know, brainstorm some within your organization about, hey, what have we done this last year that's really benefited the, um, our users or um, a great idea that we had to solve a business solution? Um, here's something I did for professional development that really helped. Uh, you want something that's not too narrow, um, that has, you know, broad appeal. You want somebody looking at the session selections on the app to say, wow, I really um, want something, you know, regarding that. Um, and then, you know, again, we already talked about seeking input and guidance from peers. 
uh, submit early and submit on multiple topics. You aren't required just to submit um, on one uh, topic. So um, that's, I think, really important too, because something that you might think is um, value add, um, it may be the other topic that you spent, submit on that really, you know, uh, gets, garners some attention and, and the attendees want to really um, hear about. So feel free to submit on multiple topics. We already talked about the catchy title and filling in at least three learning objectives. I mean, honestly, five objectives helps in getting more votes from those um, people that are voting um, on the papers. Uh, really look at it in terms of how it impacted the business, right? Where did you find success from a business perspective? Because honestly, you know, implementing a tool and uh, or uh, you know, upgrading that that there's a lot of value add in just the process around that. But at the end of the day, if you don't have some business drivers associated with that or some impact, um, how it helped the business positively, um, that's not going to be as strong of a story. Um, also, it's, it's good to do lessons learned. I mean, we're not always about, you know, uh, looking at uh, things through rose-colored glasses, right? People want to know, you know, if they haven't upgraded from 1213 to 1228, they want to know, well, where, well, what were the roadblocks? Where did you hit, you know, challenges? Um, how did you solve those challenges? Because again, if they hit those same things and they already know how to address it, right? So um, knowing um, those, those lessons learned, um, that's always a great objective to put in there, right? The lessons learned as we did X, Y, Z. Um, also, if you are a consultant, I would recommend getting your customer top billing, let them come to you um, and be the primary presenter and um, you know, co-present with them. I will let you know in terms of, again, priority of selection is always given to um, users over um, consultants. I mean, I, I worked for a consulting firm, so I absolutely know and champion the fact that consultants have a lot of value add in terms of having seen a lot of different customers, um, a lot of have, having gone through a lot of different project cycles. So there's definitely value add there, but if you can bring the customer along, um, they provide a perspective, I think that our attendees really value. Um, and again, it will get higher priority in terms of um, being selected. So things to avoid when you're submitting your paper, um, really important, do not use, please do not use your company name in the title, the abstract of the objectives. We are not um, voting based on company XYZ, uh, putting a presentation in. So um, please avoid doing that because um, we'll, we'll mask that anyway. Um, and so it, it, we want this to be something that, that people can look at, um, you know, what you've done regardless of, um, you know, put the industry, put, put how many people you're, are in your company. I mean, you can do identifying things, but just don't use the name of the company. Please run spell check, grammatical mistakes. I mean, again, as a voter, when I see in an abstract and an objective, um, spelling errors or grammatical mistakes, then that is a kind of a window into what is gonna be in the, pre in the presentation, right? So, so just, take that extra time to do your due diligence. A lot of times what I do is I put, um, because there's word counts and everything on the abstracts and on the, the title abstract and the objectives, I go ahead and put that into a word document and you know you can run spell check in the word document and get the grammar right and all of that. Um, and also do the word counts before, and then it's just cut and paste to fill out the um, submission form. Um, Make sure you place your session in the proper track. Uh, this is a question we get every year. Um, I think we've done a better job um, over the last couple of years in getting the smart tracks correct and really aligned with um, the Oracle product families, right? So I think you'll have less of a challenge to do that um, now, but do pay attention to what smart track you're putting it in. Don't just put it in the first one on the list. And then finally, I, I you know, I almost feel like I don't even need 
to you to say this, but um, please do not plagiarize other people's work. Other people have worked hard to, to put something together if it's out on the internet. So, many, so much information is already out there, but um, don't, don't take from other people's work. I know you wouldn't want them to do that, you know, with your work. So um, we do take that seriously. And so um, don't, don't just, you know, please don't do that. You have your own stories to tell and, and that's what we want to hear about. Okay, so the paper selection process itself, um, OATUG members vote on the proposal. Um, they provide, um, uh, Mike actually provides attendee historical data is used um, to see how many sessions we're going to have for each particular smart track. So you can imagine EBS financials, that's going to be big, right? Because there's a lot of product areas, uh, you know, there's a lot to say about that and we have high attendance in those sessions. Um, so we do have, um, we utilize that to lay out the rooms and how many sessions each particular track is going to get. Um, the OATUG track leads use um, the proposal rating based on the voting um, and their comprehensive knowledge to build an agenda and to lay out um, the, the sessions within each day and um, time. Uh, we also look at um, things that um, compete with each other. You know, if we had, you know, three workflow sessions and they all were at the same day and time, that doesn't um, necessarily help you, right? Because um, you want to have those laid out where you can maybe take all of those if that's your, that, that's your subject matter um, that you want to really talk about. Uh, I think we do a good job with the voting and with the track leads helping us to assemble the um, rooms. Uh, and I think this last metric really helps us know that because last year the OATG educational sessions had an average rating of 4.3 out of 5. So um, you're, you're getting good sessions um, throughout the week. And I think this is one of the reasons we have such good attendance at um, Collaborate and people keep coming back year after year. So finally, uh, I want to give you some great resources for Collaborate 20. Um, the Collaborate URL itself is given there and also uh, the presenter information. Uh, we hope that you choose to submit your, your um, customer success story. Um, we always, you know, really, I, I say no topic is too small. I mean, maybe that at some point there might be, but um, your success story is going to help somebody else. So I really hope that you take the time um, to, you know, look over this last year at what you've done um, in your organization and submit some papers for Collaborate. Uh, another thing that keep in mind our proposal submission dates and deadlines. Friday, October 11th is coming very quickly, 11.59 um, p.m. Eastern time, the call for presentations closes. So uh, please, um, you know, we're already into October. We always get a ton of presentations right at the end. Um, and so we're expecting that, um, but we've already gotten presentations that have been submitted. So, so you won't be the first one um, if you submit today. Um, finally, the week in the week of November 20th, um, the accepted presenters are going to be notified um, if they're going to be presented, I mean, if they're going to be accepted for um, collaborate. And then I already mentioned this um, February 28th, 2020 um, is when your presentation materials are um, due and need to be uploaded. And we do review those as well. We do want to make sure that, um, you know, there's substance in them, that they follow the template. The template will be available after um, uh, you're notified of being accepted. And so you, you need to use the um, OATUG uh, template to put your presentation into and put your notes into. And so we do check that um, to make sure that it, that's been complied with. And then if you have for future questions, please send those over to Mike Jones. He introduced me at the, the front of the broadcast. 
Uh, he do, does so much um, to make sure that Collaborate um, 20, all Collaborate, but he'll be making sure that Collaborate 2020 is a success, especially in the education area. And so uh, feel free to reach out to him if you have any questions. Thank you for joining us. And um, we look forward to seeing you um, in April at Collaborate 2020. Yeah, hey, Alisa, this is Mike. I, I did want to mention really quickly again, um, you know, a big reason why uh, Collaborate is different than Open World is that uh, we have user sessions, that users that talk about problems, things that they encountered, how they solved it. Um, I do know at the last Collaborate I had, we had, you know, a bunch of uh, attendees and speakers come up to me and say how much they value Collaborate. Um, listening to the user sessions, very different than Open World. And on top of it, we do have a lot of the Oracle sessions that Open World has, plus you're hearing the user sessions. So that's, that's highly important. And just remember, it's real simple to apply. We really just need a, a, a solid title, an abstract, and some learning objectives. That's all you need to do. Uh, you may also want to check on your membership. Make sure you're an OATUG member. You don't have to be a member, but uh, it definitely um, helps your organization brings you uh, to the limelight if you do have uh, an OETG membership. Um, so I think those are the big topics uh, that I wanted to talk about. And we, we hope that any, everyone listening submits at least one submission uh, for the Collaborate Conference. So thank you, Elisa. You're welcome, Mike. And again, look forward to seeing everybody there.